Welcome to the West Side Church of God. Uh, I am not Pastor Paul Binion. I am an adopted member of the West Side Church of God. In fact, I'm not, I'm not Church of God in, anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm Baptist, and in fact, I, I would get into a lot of trouble in some circles if they knew I was even here. Amen. But anyway, good to have everybody here tonight. We're going to uh, uh, try to go through our agenda tonight, uh, as Pastor Binion would say, expeditiously, and, uh, and, but also try to provide some good information uh, on the projects that are happening in our community. Uh, before we get started, uh, to honor the place that we are in, uh, we want to first uh, have a moment of silence for uh, one of the dear members of our community that recently passed, and she was a member of this church. And what that meant to us is that every, she was the facilities manager here. And so when you come to Westside Church of God, uh, this place uh, was always managed by Ann Gaston. And we want to uh, it was uh, we want to have a moment of silence just to remember Ann and to thank God for Ann. Will you join me? So God, we are grateful for the privilege of serving our community. We thank you, Master, for um, uh, the privilege of coming together and uh, uh, working together, God, to change uh, some of the conditions uh, that our community uh, is, uh, is living in. Master, we are grateful for the West Side Church of God and uh, the members of this church uh, for opening their doors and making us welcome here. And God, we pray that you would bless our plans on tonight Bless our conversation that everything that we do in this place uh, be conducive to a better, to better living conditions for everyone in our city, especially in Southwest Fresno, downtown, and Chinatown. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, you have a packet uh, if you picked it up at the table. And so in your packet, you will find on page one an agenda. Uh, on page two, you will find a code of conduct. And if you read through that uh, uh, on your own, uh, you will find that we really want you to uh, put some effort into being courteous uh, and uh, respecting the voice of your neighbor. And uh, we want you to also um, uh, make notes, make notes. Uh, doesn't mean you have to hold back, but make notes on the cards that are on the table. And uh, you'll have opportunity to ask questions and then also submit cards with questions uh, if you have things that need to be followed up by our city staff or by our outreach and oversight committee. We have some members here of our outreach and oversight committee, and I'm just going to ask them to raise their hands if you're part of the outreach and oversight committee. If you look around the room, you'll see some hands raised. Uh, there's a Jordan and a half sitting right here. Amen. And so thank you. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. And so if you have any questions about the TCC projects, uh, we are uh, responsible for doing some legwork and helping you get answers uh, even beyond this room. Uh, so don't hesitate to use us in that capacity uh, and help and, and let us help you uh, become more familiar with what uh, the TCC projects are doing. Uh, uh, we have in your packet a survey from UCLA uh, Luskin Center. We also have a, on page 8, Project 7 slides. Uh, on, on page 14, uh, we'll have slides for the voice uh, project. Um, and then on page 21, business development workshop flyer. And then uh, a comment ma matrix on page uh, 22. All right, so like I said, we want to... Um, uh, be clear and move uh, quickly through this agenda uh, without, uh, without uh, sacrificing uh, your opportunity to uh, ask questions and learn more about the projects, especially those that are being, being presented here on tonight. And so the first person I want to introduce is uh, Britta McOmber. She's from UCLA Luskin Center, and she's going to give us information on the evaluation survey information. Britta. Thank you. Um, so there's a short survey that's in the agenda packet, and I'm just going to read out a quick message about it. 
give a little bit of information um, as well as who I am and uh, my role with UCLA. Um, so my name is Britta. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm a researcher at UCLA Luskin Center for Innovation and I'm part of the Transformative Climate Communities Evaluation Team, um, which is jointly made up of researchers from UCLA and UC Berkeley. And we are hired by the Strategic Growth Council, SGC, um, a few members of which are here tonight, um, to evaluate the environmental, economic, and public health impacts of Transform Fresno over the five-year grant period. Um, so as part of this, we're tracking the progress and outcomes um, of a number of things, but tonight specifically about community engagement activities um, in the community, and we're asking just for about 10 minutes of your time in completing this brief survey about your involvement with Transform Fresno to date. Um, the survey will help us better understand who the program is serving and the ways that, that it's serving them. And your participation, I will say, is completely voluntary. If you want to fill it out, you can. You don't have to. Um, it, also, when you're filling it out, if you don't feel comfortable answering, answering a certain question, you can skip it, so you can fill it out to whatever degree of completeness you want. Um, your responses to the survey will be kept confidential and will be de-identified before being shared with SGC or any local partners here in Fresno. Um, so I just want to say thank you in advance for taking the time to complete the survey. and. Um, the information that you share through the survey is really invaluable in, in helping inform the design and implementation of the TCC program. Um, so I will be here throughout the meeting and also stick around a little bit afterwards. If anyone has any questions uh, about the survey um, or you want to know any more additional information, you can come and ask me. And I also will say that I have um, copies of the survey in Spanish if anyone prefers to fill it out in Spanish. Um, and if you want to just rip off the survey from the agenda and leave it on the table, then I can collect them when the meeting's over. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Britta, for that information. I want to encourage everybody to uh, take the time to fill out the survey and uh, give us some honest feedback uh, about the process that we're going through. I failed to acknowledge our S uh, SGC uh, members that are here today. Thank you very much for making the trip down to Fresno uh, and joining us for our quarterly community meeting on tonight. Uh, now we're going to have Courtney Espinoza to come, our TCC program manager, and she's going to give us an update on the community engagement plan, workforce development plan, and displacement avoidance plans. Ms. Courtney. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming and taking time out of your busy schedules to come to this meeting. So let me start off with the community engagement plan. Uh, we issued six different RFQs, and they were published, and we had 12 different respondents for those. Um, the community engagement plan was separated into six different categories of community engagement. Um, so we are working through the process of interviewing those respondents. Um, members of our Outreach and Oversight Committee are sitting on the, those panels, and we hope to have some decisions made um, by early next week. Um, <clears throat> hopefully those contracts will be developed and approved through the City Council in sometime in April, and effective May 1st, they'll start work, hopefully. That is our plan. For our Workforce Development Plan, we have contracted with the Fresno Regional Workforce Development Board to oversee the West Fresno Advanced Technology Training Program. They've started their program and are here to tell the community more about it later in the agenda. A proposal for the Voice Gladiator Program, administered by State Center Community College, has been submitted to SGC for approval and we're waiting for their final approval um, for that. Once approved, we'll enter into another sub-agreement with them, and the program will be underway. State Center Community College and their partner is also here tonight to talk more about their program as well later in the agenda. For the Displacement Avoidance Plan, um, the business development workshops will be conducted twice a year for businesses in the project area to inform business owners about resources that are available to help grow their businesses we have a representative from Fresno Forbes here tonight. Um, if you would like more information on those workshops, 
and see the agenda packet for the flyer for that workshop later in April. For our first time home, home ownership workshops, we're gonna hold three of those this year, <clears throat> with the first one beginning um, around the first part of April. Um, the workshop will focus on home buyer education and financial literacy for transformed Fresno residents interested in purchasing a home for the first time. More information will, will come. Um, please make sure we have your email address um, as you signed in and we will send out those um, workshop announcements through the email. You can also call our Transform Fresno website or Transform Fresno um, phone number and visit the website for that information as well. So we are working with Central Valley Business Diversity Partnership to begin a one on one technical assistance for businesses located within the project area. We will be sending out more information regarding that shortly as we are still waiting for final approval from SGC on that part of the project. Um, some exciting news, we've hired our displacement avoidance consultant and she is here tonight. Um, we issued an RFQ for, in, for interest um, in being that consultant and um, performing the tasks that are outlined in the displacement avoidance plan. Um, we received two responses from that and we had our interviews. On the panel was a member of the Outreach and Oversight Committee and a member of the Anti-Displacement Task Force. Um, and it was a unanimous vote. Um, we, we think we do really have the best person for the job. Her name is Destiny Thomas. Um, she comes to us with relevant experience in the field and is here tonight. She's gonna introduce herself. So Destiny, can you please come up and tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be doing for Transform Fresno. Good evening, everyone. I am um, a combination of thrilled to be here, but also a little nervous if I could be transparent. Reason being, uh, I myself come from a community organizing background. I've always been rooted in housing justice work and social justice work, and so I understand what it means to take on a role like this. Um, I have a very strong sense of urgency about it, so I'm gonna take this time, because I'm so new, um, still need to hand my paperwork in, um, I can't speak meaningfully, um, as meaningfully as I'd like to about our plans moving forward, but I wanna talk a little bit about who I am and what my intentions are, and of course, um, make a commitment to be as present in this process as possible. Um, so again, my name is Destiny. I'm from Oakland, California. I did live in Fresno for six years while working at Caltrans as an environmental planner. Um, just to ground us in, in the time frame, uh, I was living in Fresno when I always, the hallmark in my mind in Fresno, I was living in Fresno when Oscar Grant was killed in Oakland um, and right before Tamir Rice was killed. Um, and I bring that up and lift that up in this space because um, my connection to housing justice work is very closely linked to transportation planning, right? So I'm a transportation planner by trade um, and I find that freedom of movement is inextricably linked to um, freedom and ability to stay in place, right? So the same um, decisions and processes that inform how, when we move, how and when we move also inform um, how and when we stay and how we build community and how we build kinship. Um, and so I've dedicated my life to studying these things. I'm an anthropologist. I have a doctorate in anthropology. I'm very proud of that. Um, and I'm bringing all of this with me to this process. A little more experience that I have is um, I was actually the project manager for the TCC grant that came to the Watts community um, two, a year and a half ago. And the displacement avoidance study that we did there revealed a lot about the gaps that exist um, statewide and locally and regionally when it comes to um, how we consider, how we define and how we consider um, the impacts of our work even when we're talking about making um, investments, large investments in the community. We have to be able to preemptively plan for the very likely um, impacts that it will have on um, people's ability to remain in place. And so what we found in that study in the Watts community was um, 
that it is possible um, to track risk of displacement. There, for a long time in this field, people would assume and say that you can't predict um, displacement. Uh, we found that you could. Uh, we also found that you could identify solutions that um, disrupt displacement that's already happening and also heal past harms from displacement that has already occurred. And so a lot of my work will combine um, not just methods to study, because I see that there's a lot of extraction already happening here, a lot of data already being collected. So um, I plan to do a lot of ground truthing, um, a lot of oral history collection. Um, and that collection is not just for the purpose of building the case for a plan that already exists. It's more so um, what I would like to think of as a gift that's coming back to the Fresno community. Just a few people that I have had a chance to interact with uh, within the project area and throughout Fresno, um, it's really apparent to me that um, there's been some erasure that's happened through the way investments have rolled out historically. And so I'd like to use this opportunity, um, or I'd like to take this opportunity to um, start to tell those stories again in a way that can be gifted and presented uh, for generations to come. So one of the methods that we know in our field for preventing displacement is to highlight where displacement has already happened and put human faces, names, and stories to that. So that's one example. Um, another programmatic component that we plan on bringing to this process um, is a restorative justice piece. So I will, along with my colleagues um, that work with me, we will be facilitating and offering restorative justice spaces um, to residents of Fresno so that they can interface directly with decision makers in the city of Fresno to actually begin to do start the process of healing past harms. So these are just some on the ground programmatic examples of things we can start to do today um, that will connect um, a strong sense of anti-displacement values to this work while we work as a community to um, come to a consensus about what we want to establish moving forward. And when we speak to moving forward, I'm specifically speaking to making policy recommendations that can remain in place once this project is implemented. That will serve two functions. One, to continue to protect residents that are here, but also um, as someone who participates regularly um, in talking about investment priorities throughout the state of California, um, I'm also aware that um, from a geographic equity standpoint, Fresno has, has been looked over a few times, overlooked a few times. Um, and so these are the types of projects um, and data collection efforts and policy efforts that will elevate Fresno um, and bring in more resources and revenue because we would have had a public process, everyone's voice would be included, um, and that's just something that is um, morally easier to fund. So I'm here, I'm gonna stay the whole night. If anyone wants to um, give me ideas or ask me questions or, or grill me and make sure I'm prepared to do this work, I invite you to do that. I'm very proud to be a part of this effort and I really am just here to um, create a space and a structure for everyone's voices to be included. Well, we're certainly happy to have Ms. Thomas as part of our team here in Fresno, and we look forward to working with her and uh, sharing in that experience that she's going to bring here. One of the things, uh, West Fresno, Southwest Fresno, Chinatown, and downtown for many years, many years, uh, has, uh, they have been neglected. They have not been uh, invested in. And so uh, the, the, this is a huge TCC funding is a huge investment in areas of our city that have been neglected for many years. And so uh, that, that's going to that's going to create a shock value across our neighborhoods. And so uh, we're, we're not only concerned about how that affects uh, current business and the possibility of business displacement in our community, but our elderly uh, longtime residents of, of the areas these areas areas in our city. We're concerned about them as well, so we're looking forward uh, to uh, what you and your team can do to help us uh, to help those in our community that want to continue to live in Southwest Fresno, continue to live in Chinatown, continue to do business in Chinatown, business in West Fresno, and uh, in uh, downtown, in our downtown area. Put your hands together and welcome Ms. Thomas again. 
Amen. Make her feel welcome to our city. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, are there any questions about these transformative plans? Any questions uh, that H can answer? Any, okay, no H. Any, any questions that, uh, that you have, uh, whether H can answer or not, uh, uh, regarding our community engagement plan, um, workforce development plan, or the displacement avoidance plan? Any questions? Well, thank you so much. It must have been very clear. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. And if you have questions, you think of questions later, please fill out the cards on the table. Uh, we'll give them to Courtney, give her much work to do. Every card that you fill out, she'll have to chase it down, and she will be responsible for getting you an answer that will satisfy that question. Please fill out the card. All right. So our first project that will be presented on tonight um, will be presented by Courtney Espinoza. Uh, our TCC uh, program manager. Uh, she's going to give us an update on projects 15, 16, and 17. Courtney? Thank you. Okay, projects 15, 16, and 17. These are the um, Southwest Fresno Community Food Hub projects. Um, hopefully some of you remember them. So we received a letter in December, at la late December 2019 from Food Commons Fresno saying that they could no longer be the project lead for these three projects. So um, we then decided that we should ask our current project um, leads, um, our current partners, to see if any of those that have already been pre-qualified and have the capacity are interested in those projects. Um, we only got back one response with Fresno Metro Ministry, and they said that they would love to lead the community orchard project which is project number 15. so um, we have uh, requested a new project lead change in fresno metro ministry and we are working through um, what their scope of work and budgeting if any changes need to be made uh, we're working through that with them and sgc at the same time for final approval um, we, since we didn't receive any interest for projects 16 and 17, which is the um, Urban Heat Island project and the Distribution Center project, um, we put that out to RFQ to see if there's anybody um, in Fresno that would like to um, be the project lead and oversee those projects. So that RFQ was published on February 24th. I'm sure if you're part of our mailing list, you would have received that. It's also on our website, that RFQ process. So if you know anybody or any organization that is willing to take on those projects, please go to our website and, and review the RFQ or send, send them my way and I will tell them where to go. Um, that, that process, um, the proposals are due on March 27th. So we hope to have more information at the next community meeting. Hopefully we have um, new project leads already in place and they can get that started. So again, the RFQs are available on the Transform Fresno website. They're also available on the City of Fresno website um, through the Planet Bid system. So um, that is the update that I have for projects 15, 16, and 17. Um, and I will pass it over to Pastor Lewis again. All right, thank you. So if you have any questions about those projects, please uh, hold them, write them down, because we're going to have a big question and answer session after all the projects that have, have had opportunity to present. Uh, the next project that we're bringing up is Project 7, Clean Shared Mobility Network Project, uh, led by the Fresno, uh, Metro, uh, Black, uh, Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're going to be uh, hearing from Tara Lynn Gray and Troy Hightower on tonight. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Troy Hightower, and I'm here with Tara Lynn Gray from the Black Chamber, and we're here to talk about our project number seven, the Clean Shared Mobility Network. We have some of our partners here as well for this project. Um, before we get started, I did want to thank uh, the city and Courtney for all the effort that we've spent um, together to get this project implemented. First, I want to talk about who we are. <clears throat> CSMN, as we call it, is a group of organizations 
some are operators, some subcontractors, some providers. So in, in addition to the chamber, we have the Shared Use Mobility Corporation, TDH International, Green Commuter, which is one of the larger operators of electric vehicles, Early Readers Preschool, Shared Mobility Development, that's a bike share partner, so just to let you know, it was in the guide, we're gonna be providing a network of EV vehicles, vans, and bikes, and charging stations throughout the city and focused on the disadvantaged communities. And then we have Leap Go Ray. Um, he's a rural operator out of Huron that's gonna provide um, trips between a rural community and, and downtown Fresno. So. That's gonna be a challenge, but we see it as a big opportunity uh, in the future, huge. And then we have inspiration technology, transportation, excuse me, and then uh, community engagement consultant. And our community engagement consultant is gonna be working closely with the city and their community engagement uh, plan. That's the list that I, I just reviewed. The, these are the things that we do, electric vehicle car share, ride sourcing, van pool, car chargers, electric bike, and a customer service center that we're developing. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with car sharing and electric vehicles in general, but that's a purpose of our, our network, is to bring these transportation systems to Fresno and have a number of community engagement and education workshops to help people understand these new transportation systems, how they work and how you can use them. This is the status of our, our project going back to January 2018. We began before January 2018. Uh, this was the point where um, the state, the Strategic Growth Council and their TCC program granted, granted the uh, approval. April of 2019, that's when the state, SGC, and the city finalized their contract. And then following that in November, that's when the city contracted with us as the lead entity for the CSMN project. That was in just this past November. So where we're at now, March of this year, is we're in the stage, we're, we're operating under two contracts. And I don't want to get too technical, but we call them Agreement A, Agreement B. Agreement A, which we're on now, is really about negotiating and finalizing all of our contracts and all of our subcontracts. That's where we're at now under March. And we anticipate, we, right now we're at 50% signing of our subcontractors. And um, we ain't, yes, yes. We, we were at 37.5, so. But, um, but we do anticipate uh, finalizing the remaining subcontracts very soon. This is our project timeline, and we have a total of 10 tasks that we have to do. Um, task one, two, four, and six are in that agreement A. And so what we did in this graphic is we list the next task over the next one year period from our November 2019 start to November of this year. So this is not all of our task or the length of the project. So we wanted to just show the next, the first year. Project setup, that's what we're in now. Um, partnership negotiation development we're in now as well. If you see the dates underneath, you may not be able to see that, but they're, they're November to February, where November was the beginning of the project CSMN. So we've actually been working on those since November. Uh, the charging station site selection is quite an effort. Um, we've, we've begun that, and that's going to take us a while. What we've decided to do, among other things, is develop a site selection methodology so that we'll have a, a defined 
methodology and policy on what processes we go through to select a potential site. So that's going to include a lot of things um, from just electrical and physical infrastructure requirements to permitting and ownership of sites and who's going to operate them, as well as community engagement. So we're developing this methodology, so not only do we use it to help us pick sites, but it, it would help us to explain to the community how we selected these different sites. And we plan that that, that methodology will be consistent with other EV readiness plans that have been developed by CARB, the Air Resource Board, as well as Fresno COG is in the process of developing an EV readiness plan. So in our methodology, we'll be consistent with their recommendations on where uh, the site should be. Then we'll begin the charging construction, which is scheduled to be from May through October. We've already started to get permits, so we're already prepared to begin construction. We're in negotiations on the construction that needs to go to, to support our charging station. So we can't just come in and put a charging station. There's other construction that needs to be done. And so we're permitted on uh, five so far, and we've got applications in the work with the city. And then we'll um, advance to car and bike acquisition, where we actually um, acquire the bikes and the vehicles. We'll have, we plan to have some early vehicles that we want to bring to community meetings like this so people can see and touch um, these vehicles that, that we're planning to deploy in the, within the city. Then we're gonna develop a web platform for informate, not only for information on our network, but also information on benefits of the network, such as greenhouse gas reductions and other co-benefits. And it'll also be a place where you can find information on other transportation uh, services. So we want to try and be like a one-stop portal. And, sign up and, and to sign up for services. And just so you'll know, we are planning to have uh, services for non-bankable uh, residents. If for those of you that may not know that term, non-bankable, that means people that typically do not have credit cards or smartphones, because a lot of these technologies require you to have some kind of a credit card or, or smartphone. So we're, de we're developing a system to, to handle the non-bankable. And then the um, customer service center, that's gonna begin in the summer. We should have it beginning in, in September. So those are our main, each one of those are tasks. And then we have marketing and outreach, which began in the be very beginning and will continue throughout a whole project. That's actually task number nine. But that task will go throughout the whole project. Um, and then we have the operations and program evaluations, which will begin later this year. So that's an outline of our project timeline over the next year. It does continue on. The first year we anticipate to do the most work and then the next year, not quite as much when we'll be operational. And then the third year and continuing um, in that fashion. So with that, that concludes my presentation. And Tara, do you have any final comments? Or? Yeah, I just want to um, talk about two specific things that we added um, in the contracting process. Uh, we added a community benefit agreement to all of our subcontract agreements, and those that have been signed, they have agreed to that community benefit agreement, and the substance of that agreement is that job opportunities and business opportunities that come out of this project, um, that there is a very strong local component and a preference for local small businesses and a preference for local residents. Uh, so we've gotten each one of our contractors um, to agree to that and we intend to hold them to it. It's community money and the benefits ought to go to the community. I think the second thing um, that we added in the process is to add an additional subcontract. Um, we get, got each one of our partners to contribute to 
um, a community engagement collaborative or consultant um, in which we will pull community members and other community-based organizations. We have about five that have agreed to um, be a part of the collaborative at this point and there are paid opportunities. There are subcontracts um, or one subcontract in which there are many parts uh, to help with the community engagement piece. We feel it's significant. It's very important for the community to have um, a say in where the electric bike stations go. Um, where uh, the chargers go, aside from those that were already approved um, in the original proposal. We have some locations that were um, pre-approved, like the Fresno Housing Authority and Arte Americas and, um, yes, and Central Fish. And um, I think we have a Bitwise location in there as well. Um, so those, um, you know, the additional stations outside of that core that were already identified, we want to hear from the community as to um, where they ought to go. So we are, you know, doing our best to work through this subcontracting process. Um, we've had changes in best practices. We've had changes in equipment. Um, there's a lot that's changed in the two years since we um, wrote this concept proposal. And so we are making those adjustments now and uh, preparing to march this Fabulous project forward. I thought you were going to say more, so I just. No, no, that's all right. All right. Why you put your finger in me, man? I don't know. All right, thank you for that presentation. Let's give them another hand. If you have any questions, you think of any questions, you'll have an opportunity in a few minutes to ask uh, some, uh, for some additional information. The next project will be workforce development uh, project uh, sponsored by the VOICE uh, uh, training program. Uh, we're going to invite uh, Mr. Jerome Conti to come up uh, Darnell and Darnell Harris, uh, uh, State uh, Center Community College District, and Albina Cruz. So you'll come up however y'all have worked that out. Come on up and uh, let's hear your presentation. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come talk to you today. Um, I've been in this community for a little over 12 years now, and I've heard about the community meetings. I've never attended, so, you know, I'm really excited to be here today, and um, really excited about this welding pre-apprenticeship program and the, the partnership with um, Voice Gladiator and State Center Community College District as well as the city of Fresno and um, SDC. Um, I want to make a couple of introductions. Uh, Mr. Jerome County, our vice chancellor of ed services and instructional um, um, effectiveness at State Center Community College District. Ms. Um, Cheryl, I got to slow down on this one. Cheryl Lynn Krill Hornsby. So I got to do that every single time. Um, she couldn't make it tonight, but she was a very integral part in helping put this project together. Um, Mr. Leroy Candler, um, the project manager for Voice Gladiator. Um, Ms. Leroy, are you here? There you go. Got it. Got it. I peeked over my shoulder and didn't see you, so uh, glad you're here tonight. Um, Abena Cruz. Abena. Abena told her, man, you've been letting me say it wrong for a while now. So Abena Cruz is our assistant project manager for voice and myself, Darnell Harris, I am the project coordinator for um, State Center Community College District. Um, so before we talk about the project, I know I'm preaching to the, I'm sorry. I 
I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I feel like it's really important to point out um, some of the factors as to why we even have a project. And um, a big portion of that is that the city, the, the county of Fresno has the poverty rate of 20.8%, which is almost double that of the whole state. And again, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but uh, it's really important that we, that we don't forget this. Um, the 38%, approximately 38% of West Fresno um, living below the poverty line. And, and when you break that down a little bit um, and you look at our African Americans who are at 39% in our uh, Hispanic population who are, you know, respectively at 32.3%, you know, we really have so, some big opportunity here. Um, in addition to looking at the 21.5% the the um, uh, looking at education and examining the 21.5% of Fresno who have a, a bachelor's degree or above and, and how we really aren't even close in the West Fresno area. That, like I said, that gives us a really big opportunity here for this welding program. A quick overview of this project. Um, it has a three-year project timeline with a $1.85 million operating budget. And the goal is to recruit 100 qualified applicants um, from our targeted uh, zip codes that's uh, three, 93706, 93721, 93727, which is one I live in. So, you know, it's near and dear. Um, the project has a two month startup time period, which is coming really soon. So, we've really been banging the drum trying to hurry up and um, get this project underway because April's coming pretty fast. Um, has a 36 month training program, and we've broken that out. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation um, with the one month closeout period. So this program has four major components, um, not getting into the weeds from the high level, four major components. And you can kind of, hopefully you can see it. Um, these areas right here in the gray. So we have the project administration, supportive intake and training guidance, the training and instruction, and the employer outreach and training placement. So that's, that is what comprises this uh, apprenticeship program. Um, and those are the four components that we'll really talk about right now. So looking at the first one, the project administration, um, State Center Community College District will serve as the project lead um, and will work with Voice Gladiator as subcontractors to deliver the training um, services. So State Center's um, program coordinator is primarily responsible for general project, general project administration accounting and compliance. Um, Voice Gladiators uh, assistant program manager is primarily responsible for coordinating, recruiting, screening, training, and in uh, participant support. So both programs will work together um, to ensure that the training, that the deliverables on the training is done but also work together on the, the reporting structure and reporting out the success and um, some of the facts about training. So in terms of program sustainability, um, both, pro both organizations recognize that employment um, need and all of those factors fluctuate, fluctuate so we uh, will be working together on a sustainability plan. And um, the goal 
is to ensure that we build capacity and that beyond the scope of this current funding that uh, Voice Gladiator is able to continue to provide training in our targeted community. Okay, so to talk to you a little bit more about the, the training component, um, Abena Cruz will jump in here and I kind of made a joke earlier. I said, I said uh, spell, catch doesn't, spell change doesn't catch everything. So I kind of know that being in education. So, oh yeah. Hello everyone. I just wanted to say I'm thankful for being able to be here this evening and I'm especially grateful to be able to present this opportunity to our community. Um, I'm, I wanna say I'm especially thankful because I'm a part of this community born and raised in 93706. So it's great to be back to be able to present this um, program. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about why our program is different and why it will be successful. And that's because of the four components that we have comprised our program of. And the first two, um, they're traditional components is outreach and recruitment. And we also have case management, but our outreach and recruitment is based a little bit differently. We're gonna take a non-traditional approach to that and where we wanna, um, we wanna say it's not just gonna be social media or the TV or radio. We wanna go into the community where people are. We wanna go into social settings where they are, convenience stores where they are, whether it be laundromats or the grocery store. We're gonna reach the people where the people are. And that's what's gonna make our um, outreach different. It's gonna be based within the community. And our case management is the same. It's gonna be based within the community. We have Yolanda Randalls here who is the head of our case management um, component and she is out of West Fresno Family Resource Center, and it's based in the community also. So with those two things being said, that's part of our uniqueness, and we wanna make sure that it's in our community, by our community, and we're also staffed with people who are from our community, are invested in our community, and wanna see our community um, succeed. And we also have um, soft skills component, because when you look at other traditional programs, you can see that you can teach anyone a skill. You can say this is what you need to do to obtain a job, but can you say um, you have the mindset to keep that job? So with our soft skills component, we're, we're trying to change the mindset and change the attitude of a person to be able to sustain the job and know how to interact in the workplace. And so that's a, sustainable, a sustainability factor that we have within our program. And the last one we have is sustainability also, and that's with the mentorship program. We um, want to be there before, during, and after to provide support services and make sure that our, our participants are able to hand, handle the day-to-day -day barriers and obstacles, stress, and problems that come their way. So they have a mentor that they can rely on, call, and um, talk to whenever they're faced with problems. Our next slide, it, it just tells a little bit about the program. For we, we, Like you said before, it's a six cohort program, and each cohort consists of 25 weeks. And each week, we have 20-hour um, instruction weeks. And with that, it's a 25-week um, program, so it'll be a 500-hour certification process. Um, but what makes this also different is that we integrate the soft skills training, um, the hands-on classroom instruction, the, um, the classroom instruction itself, so that the whole day, the whole process is not monotonous and um, the participant's attention can be kept. It's gonna be non-traditional hours, evenings and weekends, so that people with other type of commitments will be able to partake in the program. And this next slide is just an overview of the curriculum that we have that are being offered through the, rain, the welding program. And if um, the participants are taking a 25 week program, they should be able to, um, to demonstrate proficiency in these areas. And once they do that, they will be uh, eligible for certification. So when we look at the employer outreach and uh, training placement component, um, 
What we have been working through is leveraging the strong community ties that Voice has, um, and then the, also the, the community ties that State Center Community College District has. Um, but we also know that, that that's not enough. So we, the, we by leveraging um, some of our new built relationships with um, trade unions, um, industry partners, and, and other organizations, um, we really believe that um, that is the key to um, um, achieving our goal of 100% placement um, of our participants in this program. So looking at some of the goals of this project, um, Abina really laid out how we broke it down, um, but I mentioned the 100% 100 placement. So over the duration of this program, the, the goal is to have 108 individuals begin a 25-week training program with at least 80% at least completion rate, and then you combine that with our goal of 100% placement for those participants who complete the program within one year, and you do the math, and that ends up being around 80, a minimum of 86 families in our community who are positively impacted by this program. So part of me and, and just one of the questions that I always have to ask is the why. And so that's great, but why? And you know, I threw the number 86 out, and in education, we're really good at talking about the numbers and throwing out the data, and the higher the number, hey, we love that. But when you really look at the why, and it, it's why are we so excited about this program, and it's because of the tremendous personal, community, and generational impact that this program could play past this funding um, by providing um, support that's empowering. And I know through a lot of programs, um, a lot of participants feel disempowered, they feel um, isolated, and, and this is a different program in that um, we believe in building uh, the participants' self-sufficiency so that after they, they participate in this program and they move on, they are, they are empowered to do the next step. Um, and then changing the narrative. This is something that um, in working with our students in the State Center Community College District that I really feel is a personal um, a thing of mine and it's really changing the narrative. And that's that story that we tell ourselves or that gets passed down that, you know, our family is just this, we've been built, dealt a bad hand or uh, that's just the way it is. Really focusing on those soft skills, like Abena said, to change mindset. And then simply creating access to uh, good training that leads to um, sustainable wages in the jobs. That in and of itself, that, that doesn't really need a whole lot of explanation. Um, then the sustainability piece of creating momentum to ensure that zip code doesn't necessarily mean destiny. Anything you want to add? Okay. So just thank you for your time, and I believe that with um, our partnership, uh, we have the capacity and the commitment to make sure that um, we make a big change in our target populations. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Albana. Thank you for um, your presentation. Now we're going to invite Ka Zhang up to talk about the Fresno region, uh, no, back up, workforce development. Uh, West Fresno Advanced Transporta Transportation Training Program. Thank 
Good evening. Um, so my name is Ka Zhang and I am with the Fresno Regional Workforce Board. Um, so the project that we are going to be um, implementing here is um, we're going to be training 250 individuals from the 937706 um, and 93721 um, zip codes um, in commercial truck driving um, with using low emissions trucks. Um, so we, the Fresno Way will be serving as the fiscal agent um, and we will be subcontracting out to Oscars Group, West Fresno Advanced Transportation to, to facilitate the training, to provide case management, to ensure that we're essentially implementing everything we said we would do and providing all of the deliverable, deliverables under this grant. So um, I'll keep this short. I know I'm a little bit hungry. Um, so right now we will be releasing um, an RFQ to purchase a low emissions heavy truck that'll be coming up within the next, um, the next month. Uh, right now we are working with Oscar and ensuring that um, he is aware of everything that, everything that we need as far as documenting, information, case management, all of that. Um, we actually have a meeting with them next, ne tomorrow, um, and then I just saw a contract come through. Hasn't been signed, but it's, it's been given to Oscar to review, so we, we'll be working on that as well. Um, and then we are hoping to start training sometime in July. Um, with the timeline, I think we'll be able to do that. We're just, we're waiting on the procurement. That's where we're at. All right, well thank you, Ms. Young. Thank you. All right, so we've made it through our presentations and I have lost my council member. I was gonna see if he wanted to have a couple of words. If Miguel Arias, you know, can hear me. Miguel, Miguel, are you there? Are you there? Okay, good, we'll move on. All right, so do we have any uh, uh, questions for our project leaders? Any questions? I'm sorry, where is he? Oh, there he is. Come on, Councilman Arias, have a word. Have a, let, let's have a brief word, have a brief word. So a very brief word. As you know, our oversight committee this year and last year has been taking up um, the projects that for whatever reason couldn't uh, be fulfilled by the lead partners. That resulted in very difficult conversations amongst, amongst the oversight committee because our goal is to make sure that we get to as close as the community approved the projects to be done. And sometimes that means switching lead partners other times it means having more direct conversations about performance. So this summer is gonna be crunch time for most of you in the room who are lead partners and are entrusted with the millions of dollars from the state and local match resources. So be prepared for that. It's gonna be you know, work time, get your hands dirty, move things, please. Do not let any hesitation to bring an issue to our attention go by. We're here to help, we're pretty good problem solvers. After the tough questions, we really help with the finding the solution because um, our goal is to keep every project on time and on budget. So know that we'll be watching closely. We'll be doing multiple things at the same time, but we want you to be successful because we want the whole investment in this region to be successful. Uh, we do anticipate some huge milestones this summer, including the groundbreaking of the new college campus in West Fresno and a few other of your big projects. So people will be watching They'll be excited, and it's time for us to deliver this year. So um, thank you for the state for being so resourceful and also being part of the problem-solving team, and thank you for the oversight committee who spends a lot of lunch hours trying to figure out the best path forward, and to all of you for committing to do the work and to stay on budget and on time. So that's what you should take away from my conversation, on budget and on time. We got some commitments to fulfill. Thank you, Pastor. All right, thank you, Councilman Arias. All right, so we've heard, so heard from some great projects um, tonight, from some projects that are gonna bring significant change to our community. And so now we want to open it up for any questions that you may have uh, regarding these projects. This is a good time to ask those questions of those that are leading these efforts. Anybody have a question? Artie's gonna be Mike Mann, and so he'll find you if you raise your hand. Any questions for uh, any of our projects or for Courtney regarding uh, the uh, projects 15, 16, and 17, uh, the, or the uh, shared mobility project team led by uh, uh, Ms. Gray, or uh, uh, the uh, uh, workforce development projects of, of Voice and uh, West Fresno Advanced Transportation. 
Anybody uh, have any questions for these projects at this time? Yeah, this is for the um, project number seven. And it appears from what I'm hearing that a lot of this is also not happening just in Southwest Fresno, but throughout the entire city of Fresno. Is that correct? I thought that the whole purpose of it was to erase the carbon footprint in the area where the money specifically was guaranteed for, which was Southwest Fresno. So actually the transformative climate communities monies were for downtown Chinatown and Southwest Fresno. And our project is one of the few projects that actually touches all three neighborhoods. Well, it's services. So we are providing services in and out of the area. Oh, so the question was, is rural considered part of the area? So geographically, rural areas are not inside the boundaries, but the point is to provide access for the, per for the people who are inside the boundaries to have access on both sides. And so we are creating a, a network that will provide folks an opportunity to get out of their neighborhoods and access job opportunities. Does that, does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? Or any of the projects that we highlighted on tonight? Any other questions? Oh, Ms. Smith? Yeah, this is for the, um, I'm wondering about the stats that were given, the educational stats for the, I guess it's the, um, the one with City Park. College of Training, yeah, the 70% 70, 70 yes. where did those stats come from? So I don't have exactly the source right now, but I can definitely get those to you. Okay. All right, question. With the welding classes that, that will be going on, and we have Duncan Polytech, which is a vocational schooling, is there, would there possi possibly be like a step in from the vocational into this? If it's, because it's coming from a school district, and if we, we could like move towards having high schoolers take into a step into this gladiator program, Okay, somebody from the Gladiator program is going to respond to that. Mr. Candler has his hand up. Well, Duncan Polytech is a high school program. Uh, Washington Union High School already has, uh, they had uh, closed down their welding, the welding shop, but they opened it up. To this, I think this was the second or third semester they just opened up. But they have a program that will be able to step into this right here. And we already communicated with the uh, people out at the Duncan Polytech about uh, moving forward with that program. Okay. Okay, and then I would suggest having another, uh, a, a longer conversation with Mr. Candler after the meeting. Um, I wanted to just address one of the questions from uh, my- Ms. Smith? My, yes, uh, from Heat. Thank you for your question. Um, we're happy to provide you that information, but most of our data is compiled from census data, um, and we have data sharing agreements with our local school districts, um, and it's a number of uh, resources that we utilize to to uh, create our assessment. We released a report in 2014 um, that we can also share with you. That's what I'm talking about. So I'll give you my contact information because I'd like to see that. Thank you. Mr. Gillian? Hello, yes, uh, quick question for Project 7 that I'm part of. Um, just in regards to the timeline, in regards to staying on time, you guys referenced a methodology for developing a feasibility study in regards to implementing where these chargers are and whatnot. The FCOG report that's being developed, we've been working on, I'm a part of that work group, and we've been working on it for six months right now, anticipated to end at, or be finished by the end of this year. It's about mm, 14 months. Um, how does that 14 months of developing that plan play into our five-year timeline that the SGC has set? Um, that's a good question. Um, 
my understanding is that the Fresno COG plan is going to end the end of this year. We don't plan to begin implementing our construction and identification of all the sites till later this year. So we hope to be able to use their information to help inform where we're going to put ours. So the timelines do, do line up. Um, so if we're looking at implementing and putting charges in at the end of this year, we'll look at vehicles moving around by the top of 2021. There, there'll be vehicles operating prior to 2021 because we're phasing in vehicles. So you will see vehicles prior to that. We won't have our whole fleet operational by beginning of 2021, but we will have vehicles on the road for people to, to use uh, later this year. With the new census coming out, Will that have a greater effect on money coming through with this, with the programs? Because looking at the timelines, would we have a greater with community money coming through to help with these programs? The 2020 census coming now, and we have already a budget, but the last data that was used was from 2010. Now, the timeline is what, about five years that everything's gonna be implemented. Would funding be coming in like midway from the new census coming now? Yeah, I think that's more, go ahead, Claire. Um, I just have a follow-up question to your question. Are you talking specifically about a certain project, or are you talking about the TCC funding overall? So the TCC funding overall um, was allocated to us um, back in 2018, 2019 through SGC that's already been secured through the state. We are not going to get more money because of that census data until SGC decides to release another round of TCC funding that we're eligible for. So right now our funding is set in stone and for these projects. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you. Morgan. <laughs> okay. Projects of 16, 17. What, what's, what is going to Ultimately, I mean, don't we have a timeline to make a decision like really, really soon or that project's going to be gone? Right, so we did put out the RFQ for those, those two projects and that those proposals are due at the end of March. So once we get those proposals back, we will um, do interviews um, depending on what the proposals say. And so we will have members of the Outreach and Oversight Committee helping with those. Um, those proposals to determine who would best fit those projects. And then we would have to ask for a new project lead through SGC and go through that whole approval process, any type of modification to the project um, as, as we see fit. So we are hoping to do this pretty rapidly, um, but we have to let the process um, continue for that RFQ process. Is, is, is there a possibility the city of Fresno would be that lead applicant? No. No, at this point, no, that, that's not the intention. The intention is for a community organization to run both of those projects. And so we want to keep them as close to what the community has um, voted for, for those projects. So that's the intention. Would you like to apply? <laughs> so I, I have a question for the, for the, the WIB wizards. Um, how many individuals will we train for the truck driving? And, and also, where, where is the services, where is the training happen at? So we will be training 250 individuals from the 93706 and 9321 uh, zip codes. And where's the location of services? Um, it's going to be wherever Oscar, his office is. He'll be providing um, the case management services, and then we'll be using United Truck Driving to do the training. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions tonight? One other question. Yes, sir. So what, what, with all of this outreach that's going on with our workforce, um, 
have we thought about um, how it can be, how each of these projects can work together with outreach? Because if I'm doing outreach out in a neighborhood and I'm talking, I'm knocking on someone's door, if I'm equipped with all the information about solar driving, all, all of them, while I'm having one conversation, would, is that possible or have we thought about that? I guess. I definitely encourage it and maybe we can definitely get um, our two workforce projects involved on outreach together. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, we will be having a partners meeting probably in a couple of months and maybe we bring it up at that time and see if we can't combine some of the, that community engagement and community outreach to really facilitate all the projects. Well, and if we're adding that, can we just say, oh, by the way, I noticed you're, you could use solar here. Can we connect you to that as well? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Brother Cadler's hand. Yes. I was going to ask, I was going to ask Courtney, uh, on the, the second annual uh, Govanza Career Fair, is it possible for some of our workforce development groups to join with them and come out uh, on this day, because this is next week? Oh, I don't know what flyer you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think that was actually, I'm Eric Chikaski with the Workforce Board. Um, this is a event that the Workforce Board puts on on an annual um, uh, event. It's an annual event we put on. If you are interested in participating, we are um, still accepting um, registration for it. It's at no cost. Um, if you would like to attend as a vendor as well, we still have openings for that too. You can get in touch with either me or my colleague, Ka. Yes. All right, so that's a WIB project. All right, any other questions tonight uh, related to our TCC projects? Anybody? 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 We are ahead of time for the benediction, but I'm not afraid to close. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Oh, you had a question? Oh, well, why'd she point? No, no, no. Oh, you're agreeing with me. No. What do you Public, comment. public comment. Okay, uh, public comment. Anybody have any public comments? I kind of like had them all together in my head, but any, any public comment? Pastor Pointer, you got any public comment under your hat there? Okay, all right. I'm totally concerned about the construction of our uh, solar systems going up. It's very nil, and I don't know why, but uh, that part of our uh, project is a lot behind, so we need to have more conversations about how to uh, confront that. Yeah, we didn't hear you speak into I that said a we, There's a lot of um, a concern that I have is that um, the solar system's not going up fast enough. We only, I think we have, what, four? We have about eight that's been ordered to units. I mean, it's been eight months, and so I don't, we need to we need to dive into that. So is the issue the actual getting them installed? Is the is the outreach okay? Is yeah, it could be better, but it's a lot more decent than the other portion than the other side. Okay. We have any results? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. No. Okay. And so, Pastor Pointer, uh, talk to me after this so we can figure out how to, uh, how, to, how to move on that, all right? All right, well, thank you very much for coming tonight. It's been our pleasure to host you here at the West Side Church of God, where I am an adopted son. I did get a text from my, uh, my adoptive father, a, uh, who graciously wished me well, hosting the meeting in the facility that he pastors. All right, thank you so much. God bless you tonight. Have a great evening. <laughs>